people talk about oneness, a vision of oneness, maybe a belief in oneness. We're all one. We're interested in oneness, yes, as an abstract idea, but we're interested in far more than the idea of it, the principle of it, a belief in it. We are interested to go back to to the experience of oneness. That's a different matter. It's one thing to believe that all people are one or the world is one. I'm a (laughs) non-dualist. It's another thing to actually know it, to experience it for yourself, to allow it to become real, actualized. And then in knowing that experience for yourself, to be able to share that experience. If there's oneness, what does that imply? Maybe the most immediate thing we think of is that all humankind is one. We are are all one, one people, one body of humanity, no matter how divided we sometimes feel. We are one with all other human beings, one human family. And then we are one with the world in which we live. We are not separate from planet Earth. We can't survive separate from it, apart from it. Here's another area of oneness. In the ancient world, there were gods or supernatural entities that were looked at as being powerful in the way they affected human life, right? So, for instance, they would do sacrifices to the gods so the Nile River would flood properly and feed the crops, and so it went. All kinds of attempts to make the gods happy and appease their anger. Jesus came along to undo all that. He came along to teach oneness. No, we're we're not here separate from the powers of creation, the presence and beingness of creation, the creator. We're not here as separate from that reality. We're here to know oneness with it. Of course, very quickly, those who came after him told a story of human sacrifice, told a story of propitiating an angry God. But that's not what he brought. He brought something that was so antithetical to all that. He brought a teaching of oneness, not just oneness as an idea, but a how-to book on oneness, how to know oneness. I want to read a little bit of his prayer that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I and them, and thou and me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved loved them as thou hast loved me. There is a recipe for knowing oneness. Thou and me, and I and them, and I and thee. At a physical level, that's kind of impossible. Like, at the same time, for who he calls the Father to be in him, and then he's in the Father. But at a spiritual level, it just makes sense. 
like the creator, the spirit of the creator is in me. The spirit of love is in me. Thou in me. What an incredible expression of intimacy, yes? I want to read from another place in the Bible. This is from Revelation. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the middle of the seven golden candlesticks. Now here comes the, the tough message to the church of Ephesus. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, <laughs> here it comes, um, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. What an amazing message for any of us, right? In another translation, this is the King James, in another translation it says, go back to the love that you had at the beginning. Don't we all want to do that? At the beginning of what? At the beginning of your life as a child, the love you had as a child, the beginning you, ha you had on whatever endeavor it was you went on, perhaps a spiritual quest, at the beginning when you first awakened spiritually, go back to that, the love you knew then. If, if that love has grown cold, if you've been going through the motions, if you're now just doing something dutiful, and he's saying, don't just do the dutiful things, go back to the love that you had at the beginning. Go back to your origin story. Live from that and let that fuel the vision for your life. That's what I want to do. I hope you too. Let's do that together. <laughs>